One of the benefits of having a cat is that they can be great companion. In fact, there's some evidence that stroking a cat leads to secretion of the hormone oxytocin, which is sometimes called the happiness hormone or the love hormone. In fact, there's some evidence living with a cat improves your cardiovascular health, that people who live with cats for a long time have a lower risk for heart disease and stroke, presumably because they're just, they feel better. They're not stressed, they're not anxious. The first clear evidence of domestication comes from ancient Egypt, about 3,500 years ago. And there we see paintings on tomb walls of cats that are clearly domestic pets. Some cats wearing collars or eating from a bowl underneath a chair at a dining room table or in other clear indications that they are pets. So certainly they were domesticated by 3,500 years ago in Egypt. The DNA evidence also indicates domestication it occurred somewhere in the region we now call the Middle East, and specifically the Fertile Crescent. This is the place where civilization first began, where people settled down and built villages and started farming crops. And as farmers do today, you grow as many crops as you can, saving the extra for lean times. And so imagine little huts full of extra grain or whatever was being grown. Well, of course, what does that do? It attracts rats and mice. And in turn, this was where the African wildcat lived. And so some of these wildcats were willing to enter villages to be around people to take advantage of all of this food. And so that's how domestication started. Then people, seeing the cats were being beneficial, probably treated them well. They maybe put out a little food or let them into their huts for shelter and warmth. And so this back and forth of people being nice to the cats, some of the cats taking advantage, and they became friendlier and friendlier. And that is almost surely how domestication occurred. Now, I always thought that cats meowed to each other as a way of communicating. And the fact that they meowed to people was just an indication that they were in including us in their social circle. They were considering us to be honorary cats. It turns out that's not true, though. In fact, cats rarely meow to each other. They make plenty of other noises. They hiss, they growl, and so on. But they don't meow. And so the fact that cats meow to us is something that has evolved just in the last few thousand years during domestication. Moreover, they have changed their meow in a way that makes it better for them to communicate with us. The African wildcat has a much harsher sounding meow. The domestic cat's meow is shorter and higher pitched. And when you play sounds of the two species meowing to people, you don't tell them which one is which, they can clearly tell them apart, and they find the domestic cat's meow to be much more pleasing to the ear. So scientists speculate that people like higher pitched sounds because that's the sound that children and infants make, and so we're just attuned to those sounds. And so the domestic cat has changed its meow in a way that we will find more pleasing and thus presumably treat them better. The same thing is true of the purr. Cats have two types of purrs. One of them is the very pleasant, contented sound that a cat makes when you're stroking the cat and the cat is happy, it's kind of brr, brr. But they have a second sound, a sound that is much louder and more insistent, kind of like a chainsaw, kind of a brr, brr. This is the sound the cats make when basically they want something. And it's a sound that definitely gets your attention. Scientists, again, looked at the digital recordings of the sounds, doing an analysis on the computer, and they could identify the element of the purr that was different uh, in the two types of purrs. They said, look, this one difference that they add during the insistence purr has a lot of similarities to a baby crying. And as you all know, humans are innately attuned to that sound. It really gets our attention for, for obvious reasons. And so the scientists speculated that the cats had changed their purr in a way to manipulate us, to use the sound that we're gonna pay attention to. So it may well be correct that they have evolved a purr that is really good at getting our attention. And when they really want something like wet food, that's the sound they make. Although many cats are very different from the African wild cat, people have created new breeds that can be quite different from their ancestor. And there are, depending on which organization you ask, as many as 75 different breeds of cats. They are bred not only for their appearance, but sometimes for their behavior. A number of breeds have been specifically selected to be very friendly, affectionate cats. 
That's true of Archie here. He's a European Burmese, and they're known as one of the friendliest cats. Here's my buddy Archie. Nothing he likes like a good belly rub. And so some cats have been selected for traits not just to make them look different, but to be good pets. So cats have come a long way in the last few thousand years. From the African wildcat, a minor player in the African ecosystem, the domestic cat has become arguably the most popular companion animal in the world. There are now close to one billion cats worldwide on every continent. Now, some of these are pet cats, maybe about half of them. The others are free living cats, but they are a great success story. Some people might argue that cats are the perfect pet for modern living. They can live in apartments and high rises. They can live out on a farm. So it's really no surprise that they've transitioned from being pest control agents to one of our best friends.